Okay. Let's try this again. 4.37 a.m. And feels like a Friday. <laughs> it's the 18th of November, 2021. I shouldn't have to put up with much more of this. Because I have deep brain stimulation surgery scheduled. Hurrah, hurrah. That's going to be... I think I've talked about that operation where they drill holes in my head and they attach it, the wires, to a controller and that controller allows you to live more of a normal life with higher quality of life. I know what's happening right now consciously is a result of a dopamine deficit but it feels different somehow because I know that this will come to a head soon. My surgery will be on the 13th of December and I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I've had some anxiety and that will pass. The issue is really the dopamine deficit, which causes the tremor. But it's not just the tremor which it causes. It's also the non-motor symptoms, the ones that lead to depression and constipation and all sorts of other nasty illnesses. But at the moment, it's sleep. The inability to sleep. Waking up at 1am, even though I've taken a sleeping tablet, I know I can't take any more dopamine agonist or any matapar, because that will just cause this to loop. So I have a very strict list that I have to follow, because it's the one I've got to follow. And this list is hard to do because of the dopamine deficit. <sighs> causes me to lose track, causes me to forget things, makes it difficult to follow the medication process, which is why I wrote it all down. And I've been to the specialist and actually two specialists have reinforced that I just need to go through this. I can't change the excess of dopamine issue. I can't take any more because that can lead to a dopamine shock. Something about how the brain is unstable and therefore it's unsuitable for doing the surgery, or at least it makes it more difficult. Who knows? So the situation is as follows. I have a very nice list, a daily medication schedule. And this list is the one that I helped to construct by chasing the dopamine dragon. And in this list, I list the pills that I need to take and when I need to take them. And it starts at 7 a.m. with the first dose of two Medipa 100 milligrams. And there are five more of those doses going throughout the day to help me stay stable. And I end up taking about 1.2 grams, which is far too much. And I know that it has to be reduced, but it can't be reduced too much because that can lead to a shock. 
so I wake up and I get up and I do meaningless things, sometimes hopefully meaningful, such as red light therapy. I don't know if that helps. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Time will tell. I've tried to use a dopamine inducer. I don't think it's called that. I can't remember the name, but I have it over here. I don't want to move anything because then the camera will just fall and it will spill everywhere and it's a pain trying to clear up and set up a camera when your hands are shaking. So I'm making this video to try to give myself and you reassurance. If you're on this devious pathway, there's a bit of suffering to go. Because it will be suffering because of the dopamine deficit. There will be times when it's better and times when it's worse. You don't want to hear any more. Actually, I want to hear more. I want to hear the positive things. The positive things that the professionals who are helping me. The people who love me. The friends who give me time. The colleagues who put up with me and my dopamine withdrawal. And above all, I thank those who are watching because you give some meaning to an otherwise drab and dreary life. Perhaps I can send a message or at least provide an example of what it's like to have this dopamine deficit and this Parkinson's disease. Mine isn't a bad one. Mine's actually not bad at all. People have it much worse than I. It just feels bad, but it's a feeling. Which is why, oh, don't touch that. Which is why I use Rescue Remedy as a kind of placebo effect to help me settle down. And maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. But I find it helps to distract me. Because distraction is a useful technique. Just straightening the shirt. Because if I can distract myself, then I won't think about what I don't need to think about. It's a funny loop. Anyway, I know it's going to get worse until it gets better. It's 4.45 a.m. Normally I wake up at four. Not sure why. Maybe it's because there's less dopamine available or fewer cells producing the dopamine which are required, which should be producing the dopamine. There will be pauses and perhaps times when I'm a little bit incoherent. Maybe I'm not so incoherent. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I am. Fortunately, there's a lot of things that I don't need to worry about. I was worried about, for example, because of my extreme weight loss. Lost 20 kilos in the past, since January. Which does seem a lot. And of course, you have to go through the protocol. The protocol that says, check in case it's something else. Maybe it's not the Parkinson's. Maybe it's bowel cancer or something. So I went through all that. I had the colonoscopy, or I remembered that word, and the endoscopy. And I had a very good CT scan by a very competent gastroenterologist who was able to reassure me there was nothing wrong, at least organically, 
apart from the Parkinson's, which was good because that's the NHS protocol to follow, to eliminate that possibility, leaving me in a situation where I can be reassured. And the other thing that was reassuring me was the realisation that I don't have end-stage Parkinson's because end-stage Parkinson's is the final hurrah. That's what you don't want. Because in the end stage, you're close to the end, six to nine months, then oblivion. But fortunately, I don't have end-stage Parkinson's. I'm actually quite early in the cycle. And I'm early in the cycle because I was simply imagining it because as part of the dopamine deficit, I was drinking water. And the more I was drinking, the more I was peeing. And so I thought, at least I read with Dr. Google, uh, there's the problem. I read with Dr. Google that in end stage Parkinson's, you lose control of the bladder. And I thought, oh no, I've got it. But I haven't. It was because I was simply drinking too much water. Funny, isn't it? That's life. What else to tell you? I'm very fortunate that I don't have that. I'm very fortunate that I'm surrounded with the people who love me. I won't name names, but you know who you are. Thank you for putting up with me. Hopefully this video will help to explain some of what I'm going through. It's not always bad. Sometimes it's okay. Depends where I am on the cycle. If I'm up, I'm good. If I'm down, I'm miserable. Right now, I'm down. So I'm going through this cycle. I still seem to be making sense. But I think I soon have to get up because I have to go and pee. And why is that? Because I'm drinking plenty of water. It's important to drink water because you've got to wash through the pills and the medication. Because if you don't wash them through, they get stuck and they don't get absorbed. And neither does the food. The food malabsorption is another aspect. But that's probably something for another time. I've said goodbye enough. I'm going to say goodnight.